Hey, hey, good morning. I'm going to make sure that everybody can see me okay. Checking the hair, the makeup, the lights. It is what it is. It is raining cats and dogs here, and it's been for the past couple of days, and it's supposed to continue for the next day. So the humidity here, out of control. So the frizz and the curl in my hair, out of control. <laughs> and so that, you know, the funny thing is, is we just had like tropical storms and all that kind of stuff move through, but it really didn't make it as far to Dallas. We got one tiny little band from Laura um, and it lasted, I don't know, a few hours, but it just rained and it was really weird. It's a different type. And like my, my sister Sherry lives in Florida and I know uh, other people who have uh, are in Florida or in the Houston area on the coastal areas that experience it's just a different type of storm. And it produces different types of tornadoes. And here comes my Weather Channel days, right? Um, but yeah, so that was just a little bit different going through. But the past few days, it's just fall weather. So just raining like crazy. Hey, Joanne. So just unbelievable. So what's the weather like where you are? Let me double check over here. Make sure everything is posting like it's supposed to. Look at Facebook working. Amazing. And we switched to a new time. So I did notice that I have a lot of messages and a few text messages. Hey, I thought you were going live this morning because people are used to eight o'clock or nine o'clock, depending on where you are, or 3 a.m., depending on where you are. Um, and just double check, make sure that those messages weren't urgent. But yeah, we're going to start at a new time. We're going to do 930 Eastern right now and see how that works. Because I did notice, um, you know, I have all those analytics that you can go and look at. And I did notice that we do a big, huge uptick at half past the hour. So we'll just test it out. Sunny and humid, but cooling off a little next few days. And that's Atlanta, right, Joanne? And we have, we were up over 100 for, I think, three or four days. Hey, Ruth, dreary and cloudy for you too. And we were up above 100 for a number of days. And now that the storm is moving through or this front is moving through, I think our next week, the next 10 day forecast is only in the 80s. So we dropped a good 20 degrees. Uh, it's been crazy. Uh, meeting to attend in person today. So you're gonna have to wear real clothes. Good morning, Lisa. Um, that's pretty funny. Hey, Suzanne. I can't remember. I would see the Z and want to say Suzanne instead of Susan. So correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But I am so excited about today's show because I'm doing something I've um, for especially for the cappuccino cappuccino members. So you're going to have a live webinar that I'm going to do a special training for you. We're going to dig deep really into how to make money. So I'm going to talk about it today. But for cappuccino members, we're really going to have a separate class for that. And that will be one of your monthly bonuses. Um, so I'm I've got the same notes, so I'm trying not to go too deep into it. Um, it'll take me too long. That's why I want to do a separate class on specifically how to sell. And thank you for everybody who's sharing this show. Um, I reached out last week and asked for shares, and, and people are doing that. Good morning, Elizabeth. Hey, Terry. I'm raining cats and dogs in Northeast Arkansas, too, for Laura. So <laughs> cappuccino members for the win. Absolutely. So pretty pretty excited. Uh, thanks again, Cindy Lou, for sharing the show, especially since you're in the land down under. Wait, wait a minute. Are you in New Zealand or Australia? I found uh, that's that's so funny, too, because um, I found that I was saying some things wrong last year. I can't remember. What was I saying that was wrong? Re referring to Australia. I can't remember. It could have been it could have been the whole down under thing. Not sure. But. Yeah, so I'm really excited about the class because listing things and knowing how to sell your things, where to sell your things, and it is all part of decluttering. And it's funny because in one of my groups, New Zealand's 1.23 a.m. Yowza! I'm up. So there you go. <laughs> I'm so happy you're up. Um, but one of the things is people don't know how to sell anymore because, like, you know, we used to have a garage sale. Hey, Manette, we used to have garage sales or something like that, but it's so much easier. There's apps, and I'll be going over this for the cappuccino members in, in the class, but there are apps that you can use that you scan, like you scan it with your phone, and your phone will tell you, 
how much, you know, that picture by scanning it on the app that you, this particular app that you sell from, will tell you what it is and basically the going rate for it. There's also apps, okay, I now know what to do with my 1990s iPod. There's an app, and I'll be going over this in the live show, and then I'll go really deep into it for the Cappuccino members in the class. There's an app that you can use that um, they buy up old electronics. You've got a laptop from 2010. Here's a few hundred dollars. A few hundred dollars, seriously, for a laptop that's 10 years old? But yeah, guess what? There's people out there that want them. So then there's an app to take name brand materials. And then how do you know how to price something? You know what? I'm going to, I don't remember if that's in the live or and that's in the paid program. Anyway, there's, there's a tag. I'll just tell you, there's a tag on your clothes, you know, inside your clothing, there's a clothing tag inside your clothes that, um, that, that's a traceable number. So you can put that number into the internet and you can go and find out how much you originally paid for something, what it's worth now, where it's selling for in the internet. Um, there's apps that you can just send your things into them and they'll take care of all the sales and everything. And when they've done selling it and shipping it and all that kind of stuff, they'll just send you the money. So it's amazing what's available out there so that you can go through and organize your closet and, and um, make some money very simply, very easily. So, uh, cool and cool and humid, but nineties later said Manette. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. No want to sell pretty much most of my wardrobe. Yeah, let's rebuild it. Let's rebuild it. Not looking forward to the humidity. Yeah. See, look what humidity does. This is all frizz. I had to like flat iron to try to get some of the frizz out. And then once you flat iron it and then it curls back up again. And any, any other curly hair girls here? I mean, my hair is more wavy as opposed to curly, but when it gets humid, it turns to total frizz. So club club for the member. Yeah, the clothing tag. I'll be going over that in a minute. So, um, yeah, where is my... Yeah, so Cafe Club. If you're not a member yet, make sure you become a member because we are going to go deep into uh, Oops, how to um, do all of this stuff. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. Um, where to go back over here? Curly Girl as well, Michelle says. Yep. So, um, oh, did I freeze on, uh, no, I thought I froze over on Facebook, but I guess not. That's good. I love when the technology works because a lot of times it doesn't. Uh, then they had a sale on my mug over the weekend for Zazzle and I didn't find out about it until Monday. Um, Elizabeth has coarse and wavy hair. Yeah, mine's not coarse. It's just, and it's not fine. It's just kind of medium, but like wavy probably would be the best definition. But boy, this just, and it's already, I flat ironed it and you can already see it's kind of like frizzing up. So, and then, then if you put the, the non-frizz stuff into it, it makes my hair so soft that it won't do anything. It just kind of goes, it flattens. So I'd rather have the bit of the kinky frizz than have it go flat and too soft. So Manette has naturally curly hair too. The humidity wreaks havoc. Always looking for products that bring out the curl, but keep the frizz away. I actually, you know, I'm doing the um, podcast now, right? And I actually have somebody that is a curly hair expert that I'm going to be ha having on the podcast. I'm trying to move this window out of the way. You know, when you click on a window and then it expands and then it takes up like two monitors, it only goes under one, but it seems like it's two. And every time I clicked it to make sure I was not still on my time, because it says a minute 51, 50, 49. But anyway, so he's an expert on curly hair. I actually have two. I have one, one that's a man and one that's a woman. Um, so I'm going to be scheduling them for the podcast. So straight hair. I, you know, Ruth, I do love, I think I would prefer having curly hair and wavy hair because you can always flat iron it. And I know people with straight hair, and even when they curl it, it looks beautiful for like an hour, and then the curls all fall out. So I, I really, I think it's a, an, an advantage to have curly and wavy hair, because you can always flat iron it. So it's a 10. Yeah, it's a 10 is great. I love all the, it's a 10. Of course, both of my daughters are hairdressers <laughs> and makeup artists, cosmetologists, um, esthetician type people. 
I know all about that humility, uh, humidity, Elizabeth says. The joys of curly hair, says Deb. Yeah, yeah it's uh, the good and the bad. Oop, my mic's a little bit high, hot this morning. Let me pop that down a little bit. That's a little bit better. It was uh, going into the red zone. So anyway, so super excited about today. Uh, I am going to try to go through this. I have, it's one of those days where I went and looked at my notes this morning as I sat down to like put my earrings on and stuff. And I looked over my notes and went, I've got about an hour's worth of stuff. So I'm afraid I'm going to be a little bit all over the place because I'll start talking about something and then I'm not going to want to go too deep because then I want the show to be hours long. You know, ain't nobody got time for that, right? So Make sure that you're continuing to put your questions in as we're going along because I know you're going to have questions and I don't have the visuals for the live show. Um, I may be putting them in. I may have my editor go in and put some of them in later for the YouTube, maybe not, but for the class that I'm doing for cappuccinos, when we do a deep dive on the selling portion of this, um, I will have all, oh, there goes my time. I will have all of those. All right. So let me... Uh, fade to black. Uh, I have to figure out podcasts. Leave in conditioner called Miss Chicks. Otherwise, I am lost. Really hard to keep the body in the curl. Yeah. Uh, Susanna really real straight hair until about a couple of years ago and it started curling on its own. <laughs> it goes crazy. <laughs> it's down to your bum, but it has a mind of its own. Oh, that's frustrating. That's frustrating. I hate hair when my hair has a mind of its own. I just never quite know what it's going to do. All right, let me fade to black, pull up my notes, and we will get started on decluttering your closet and then making money from it. Clutter actually damages your brain and it makes your brain jiggle. So how can you declutter your closet? And then what are you gonna do with all that stuff? Sometimes you wanna just box it up, but in today's economy, there's a better way. You can make money from it, and I'll show you how. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Colleen. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Colleen Hammond. I'm a former on-camera meteorologist for the Weather Channel turned image consultant, coach, and mentor. In 30 days or less in the Style Academy, I will teach you how to make your perfect closet without breaking the budget. And we're going to talk about budget today too because I want to show you how to clear out your closet, number one, but then what to do with all this stuff. So if you're not following me, make sure you click the little follow button here if you're on YouTube uh, and subscribe to my channel because I put out at least one video a week, sometimes more. And I've got about 50 that have been shot already that are ready to be posted uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, more on your style and determining different things. Just little, little bitty ones. But today I want to talk about clearing out your closet and then making money from it. So today may be a little bit longer, um, but we're going to try to get to some key points. And if you are not a member of the Cafe Club yet, now's the perfect time for you to join. Because as a cappuccino member of the Cafe Club, I'm going to do a deep dive on all of this information and really, really show you how to make money from all the stuff that's in your closet. So look for the links uh, below this video on YouTube and also in the show notes if you're watching on Facebook. So what's the big deal about clutter? And why is it a bad thing? Well, I, I tend to be more of a minimalist. I like to have a 22 piece capsule wardrobe. I think I might have less than that right now. And that can mix and match for six and a half months worth of unique outfits. That means I can wear a different outfit every day for six and a half months with 22 pieces. I know it seems hard to believe, but do the math. You really can. It's exponential. So you really don't need that much stuff. And we suffer from stuffication also a bonus that's available to all Cafe Club members is a very extensive review I did on the book on stuffication. But clutter clouds your mind 
And actually, science has shown that it makes your brain jiggle. It drains your energy because you may not realize it, but when you see clutter, your brain has to use energy to process all those little pieces. So your brain's actually seeing every single solitary piece. Oh, do you hear my stomach growl? Uh, that your brain actually sees every single solitary piece and process it. And every time your brain is processing, it uses energy. There's glucose in your brain that it uses. So when you see clutter, your brain uses that glucose and then that brain power is not available for you to do other things that you need throughout the day. And once that brain power is gone, it's gone for the day. And you have to sleep at night, your brain cleanses at night and then reboots in the morning, like kind of like a computer with that energy for the day. So you don't want to have a lot of clutter around you because it causes your brain to do extra work. It then causes you to procrastinate. It's overwhelming. And it can impact your mood because it messes also with your serotonin and dopamine and all that kind of stuff in your brain. So your brain is subconsciously dealing with all of this when it could be working on other things. Um, also having an, uh, an overstuffed closet or an overstuffed house uh, wastes money. Why be spending money on all of those things when you really don't have to? It costs a time and it's not really helping you develop good habits either, either when you have a lot of clutter around you. So why is it important not to just declutter? That's what it does for your brain. But why do you want to turn around and at this time in our economy, because of the pandemic, this is being recorded in early September of 2020, and we're still dealing with record unemployment. Did you realize that we are at jobless rates that, that compete with the Great Depression at this point? 17 million, I think, people are currently unemployed. Employed. Most people are below the poverty line now. And more than a third of people missed payments last month for their household, whether that be your rent, your mortgage, um, maybe a, a, a utility bill that you weren't able to pay and, and that type of thing. So even an extra $100 can go a long way to help you and your household right now. I don't care where you stand in your life. In, in Oh yeah, well, I still have my job. Good, good for you. But what's the economy going to do? You know, we're heading down now into the fall and we're getting into cold and flu season and, and how's your health and, and that type of thing. So I want to teach you how to go into your closet because how I was taught was kind of the, the Marie Kondo method. Just get everything out and pile it on your bed and sort it. Oh, <gasps> my blood pressure just went up saying that. Did yours? The thought, now there's people who love that type of thing. Like my best friend, Barb is like an organizational freak. She's like, just before I get there, clear out all your closets and pile everything in the middle of the room. I'm like, are you sure you're coming? Because I think I'll have a heart attack if I see all that stuff piled in the middle of the room. Um, but she loves to organize. That is so overwhelming to me. I do not know where to start. But see, what happens is it's how your brain processes organization. So for me, I do just the opposite. I can't pull everything out, pile it up and decide. And then there's methods that say, well, just for the month, Every time you wear something, when you put it back in your closet, if you once you've worn it, you put it back in with the, the hanger going the other way. All right, so I'm kind of a little bit OCD, so seeing hangers going every which way is kind of bothersome to me. And quite frankly, I already know what I wear. Don't you? I mean, don't you know what you wear all the time? Don't you have a few favorite outfits that you fall back onto all the time? So that's the method I'm going to teach you today, is let's start with the core pieces. Pick out... You have that outfit that's your fallback outfit that you go, if, I'm got to, if I have to go to the grocery store, this is what I'm going to wear. If I'm going to go out to lunch with my girlfriends, that's the, that's the first outfit that I pick. If I have an interview coming up and it's important for me to look really good, I know that's the outfit I'm going to wear. Start with those pieces, right? Pick your top three outfits that you wear all the time. So then you have to do kind of my trademark thing is cat dumb. Keep, alter, toss, donate, orphan, memento. K-A-T-D-O-M. So what are you going to keep? What are you going to have altered? What are you going to toss? In this place, we're going to sell it. Um, what are you going to donate? We might sell this. Uh, and then what, what are orphans? So you may have, out of those three outfits that you pick, you may have that one blouse or top or a neutral bottom or something. Or, well, it wouldn't be a neutral bottom, but you may have a top that's what we call an orphan. 
So what you want to make sure when you're organizing your closet is each item is going to mix and match with three others. So if you have a top that's one of your favorite tops, but you only have one bottom that goes with it, you need to start either get rid of that top, but if it's your favorite top, you're not going to get rid of it. What you need to do is make sure it's not an orphan. So you have one bottom that goes with it. You're going to find two other bottoms. That's going to be put on your shopping list or your trade list or your thrift store list. Um, and we'll talk about lists in another video. Um, make sure you get a copy of the top five gar garments. I'm going to put this in the comments. I tend to be like Barb. That's good, Amber. I'm um, going to put this in the comments, the top five garments uh, that every, these are core pieces, but let's go a little bit deeper than that. So I'm going to talk a little bit more than five core pieces. First of all, you need a good basic white top. And here's a, a stylist tip for you. The white that's best for you is the same white as the white of your eye. If it's whiter than the white of your eye, it makes you, it, it'll bring your color down and it makes you look ill. Um, so it has to be the color white of your eye or a little bit beige. -er. Don't make it a bright white because it, it tends not to look the best on people. You need a little basic dress. About 10% of people, black is their really best color. And if you ever meet a stylist or somebody that calls himself a stylist or an image consultant and tells you blondes look best in black, flee. Flee, flee, flee. That's an urban legends. Blondes, unless they have brown eyes, then that's a whole different, they still don't look good in black. Blondes look best. Their best color is navy. It's blue, not black. Uh, so you need a little basic dress. Now, a lot of us have tended to find a little black dress, but if you're wearing it with the right kind of scarf, if you already have a little black dress, but uh, just a basic dress that doesn't have a lot of accoutrement on it, right? Just something really basic. Third item you really have to have is a good uh, uh, trench coat. Trench coat is classic, spend a lot of money on it. It's always, 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 always has been, always will be in style. So buy a basic trench coat in a basic color, and that's always a good, you know, have it a good length. And that'll be a key piece that you can use forever and ever and ever, and it will never go out of style. A blazer is going to be a classic. You want to have it in your neutral color, one of your signature colors, and just get a nice high quality structured blazer, have it altered to fit you, a neutral bottom, a denim jacket, a sweater or jumper, depending on what part of the world you live in. Um, and this could either be a cardigan or a pullover, but just a nice, um, what I call a finisher piece. Uh, so you're going to have a, a blazer as a finisher piece and a sweater slash jumper pullover type thing, or have a cardigan as a finisher piece. Then for shoes, you need to compare a simple flats and a classic pump. So once you have those core pieces that you're pulling out. So this is what we're doing. We're just pulling these pieces out of your closet right now is those core pieces. So really your max of what you really need are five tops, four bottoms, four dresses, and three finisher jacket pieces, a blazer, a cardigan, a sweater slash jumper. Okay. So five tops, four bottoms, four dresses, and three finisher pieces. And that's it. So once you've got those pieces on your bed, now look at what's left in your closet. What, 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 what else do you need? What's left in there that you absolutely positively have to have? Is it a memento piece? Maybe it's something that you just can't get rid of. Pretty much then everything else can go. <gasps> Did you just gasp? Did I just hear you gasp at me? Seriously, everything else can probably go. Now, if you need to pull out a couple other pieces or something like that, but these are core pieces that look good on you. They fit you well. They make you look and feel like a million dollars. That's the most important thing. They mix and match with other pieces. They fit your lifestyle. They fit your coloring. They fit your, your style personality. They fit where you are in your life right now. That's the most important thing. Those are the things you need. So now you're going to take a lot of that rest of that stuff out of your closet and sort through it and say, oh, do I really need this? And then you're, they're really going to go into trash, sell. You're just going to do that or, or donate. I mean, I guess you could donate. But what I would try to do is sell it first. So you make $3 off of it. So you make $2 off of it. You got 10 items that you're making $10 off of. You made $100. I mean, isn't that the most important thing, right? Um, so order, then you're going to pull the rest of that out of your closet. 
or push it off to one side and just take the things that you've decided to keep and put them up in front. Those you're going to order by the type. So put all your tops together, put all your bottoms together, put all your dresses together, put all your blazers together. And that's it. You got them lined up there. Now you can look through and mix and match them in new ways. I know a lot of people that put their uh, tops and, and things together in the closet based on outfit, but you limit yourself to how you can mix and match them with other things. And in future programs, we're going to be going over kind of um, outfit recipes on how to put together a recipe that you can reproduce over and over and over again to how to put together these different outfits. Um, other people like to organize by Roy G. Biv. So they put them in color organization. Um, I, you know, tend to have my things kind of organized by color in my closet. I don't go Roy G. Biv. I'm not that organized. Um, but I hang like my white tops together, my blue things together, my, you know, that type of thing. So people can organize by color. Um, then I'll put prints and patterned type things together. So if I have a couple of tops that are prints and patterns, they'll be here and a couple of solids, they'll be there. Uh, and if you're doing folded items, it's going to be the same thing. You want to have some good velvet hangers for cappuccino club members. I put links uh, to all cappuccino club, and I'm sorry, not cappuccino, but all cafe club members. I have links to uh, my researched and best found items for velvet hangers. They used to be really expensive because somebody that came out with them initially, but now they're thin, they're slim, they take up less room in your closet. So if you're keeping more than the, the core items, which I know most of you probably will, at least you'll have them, they'll hang on hangers, they won't slip off the hangers because of their velvet hangers um, and they'll take up less room. Skirts and trousers, you want to have the clips or the clamps and hang them that way because if you're hanging them over the edge, you're going to have a fold right in the middle of it. Uh, and then you're going to be steaming your clothing <laughs> before you uh, have to put them on. Uh, jacket and coat hangers. I like to have them a little bit bigger and stronger. So I have a link for some really nice high quality wood hangers that aren't super expensive. Then scarves and belt organizers. Those are really nice to have. Um, you know what? I think I actually have, um, oop. I think that I actually have that in my, is this, that's over here. There we go. Uh, organizing your cause. These are the notes that, um, and then these are all the, and those are the hangers that I recommend. And then this is a really nice way to organize all your scarves and belts and all that type of thing. They can go in here uh, and then getting some shelf dividers. So you can stack and organize towels, purses, sweaters, etc., on shelves. And I, I have a couple of links in here. Now this one is the open one. I, I do like the airflow between this because it keeps the, uh, I think it's nicer, um, but there are kind that you can get that are solid uh, acrylic. I have links to those uh, as well. And then drawer organizers. These are nice to have in your drawers to keep things separate. You know, you can put little clumps and organizations. Like I, I don't fold a lot of intimates that are going to go into my drawer, but you know, some people do. So that's a nice thing. And then these closet organizers, the hanging organizers. This is good for if you don't have a lot of shelf space, for sweaters or things like that. So you can have either the open ones or have the tiny little drawers that are in there. Um, that's pretty handy too. All right, let me go back over here. There we go. Uh, and let me go back to my notes. <laughs> there we are. Uh, all right. So now that you have that organized and put together, and again, I'm going over this like really briefly. I'm not taking you through and doing everything for you. But now that you have all that other stuff pushed to the side, now let's take all that. We've got one portion of your closet that's organized with just those core essential pieces that you need. Now, everything else you either I've already decided to donate 
or sell, or maybe there's some things in there you're not quite sure of, but they've pushed, been pushed off to the side. Now we're going to pull out the things that you want to sell. What's going to sell the fastest and make you the most money? Brand name clothing. I mean, if you have brand name clothing and some people that I've already spoken with that have done this, they're now starting to go to thrift stores and consignment shops and seeing what's available out there. And now that they know what they're looking for, wait until I tell you about sneakers. Uh, now that they uh, then now that they know what they're looking for, they can go to thrift stores and find these things and immediately turn around and post them. So brand name clothing are good. Fitness equipment right now because of the pandemic selling like hotcakes because uh, people, of course, and now we're starting to come up new year, new you, you can promote it that way now. Fitness equipment, sneakers, name brand purses and shoes. All right. So about the sneakers, who's going to buy you sneakers? Oh my gosh. I'll tell you the website in just a minute where you can go or the app that you can use to sell you sneakers, especially if they're brand name. And if you still have the original box that those sneakers came in, add $50 to the price tag. Because there's people that collect sneakers, but they want the original box. Now make sure the original box still looks good because if it's beaten all the pieces, it's not going to make you as much money. Did you know that? $50 more. Who knew? I don't know. I forget what they're called, but there's a name for people that collect sneakers. Baby clothing sell super, super, super fast. And if you are in the market for baby clothing, because now I have baby grandchildren and I totally understand. High demand collectibles, vintage dishes, vintage t-shirts. Oh my gosh. Electronics. I'll give you the, the website in a minute that will buy all your electronics. And if you're an Apple user and you still, why do we save those Apple boxes? They're so nice. They're sturdy. Good thing you saved them because if you still have the box, Again, tack 50 to to $100 onto the price of your item and you'll sell it for more. Uh, video games and consoles, kids' toys, um, books, of course, you can get rid of books, brand name clothing, purse or shoe, I talked about that. Anything retro, canning jars, lawn tools, furniture, uh, sporting equipment, gift cards. Um, I didn't even think about selling gift cards. Uh, kitchen gadgets, electronics, phones that are still working. I'll give you that website too. Bikes, wagons, scooters, holiday decor, especially as we're getting into the holidays. Baby equipment, musical instruments, craft supplies. There's a website for everything that specials out. So those are the things you want to go through. So first of all, you're going to go through your stuff and see what you have that's stuffed in that closet not necessarily clothing wise. This is for the hall closet. This is for the junk drawer. This is for the closet that has all the old electronics in it that you never want to throw away because it's not good money. Now you can sell it. So then you need to find the best reselling platform. I'll go through the platforms briefly in just a minute for Cappuccino members. We're going to do a deep dive on this on a special webinar. Um, Tradesy is a really good one that handles clothing and retail. Poshmark, the best, the most used for clothing. Uh, the real real, the Poshmark takes 20%. The real real, eBay, of course, eBay's been around forever. Um, Offer up is good for quick and local. Next door is one. Facebook Marketplace, you can reach a wide audience on that one, especially local. Let go, Craigslist, Mercari is huge, and declutter. So you, anyway, so we'll go through a little bit. I'll do a, um, speak about a lot of these websites, uh, a little bit more particulars in just a second. But then you're going to, so you're going to find out what you have. You're going to decide what platform you're going to go sell it on. Then you're going to do pho photography. We'll talk about that briefly, but we'll do a deep dive for Cappuccino members. You're going to photograph it, write up your descriptions, then upload it. Then you're going to promote it on your social media. And then if it's not so sold within 24 to 48 hours, you're going to go back and adjust some things. Maybe there weren't enough pictures. Maybe there weren't, you know, th those types of things. And then do it all over again. So what do you need? Well, you're probably going to need a couple of hangers for taking pictures of these things. So you need a one really pretty hanger or some backgrounds. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, then you, you're going to need your bins. Like, what are you going to donate? You're going to pile it into a bin. Um, what are you going to so sell? You're going to have that for hangers and that type of thing. And then if there's something that's trash... And don't put these people at, at Goodwill or thrift stores or consignment shops to extra work. Frankly, if you saw it, would you buy it? And as a seamstress, I can look at something and say, yeah, I get that because I would just sew that up and I'd fix it. But 
that may not be what somebody else wants. Maybe somebody else isn't a seamstress and they want some. So really look at something and say, seriously, would I buy this or should I just throw it out? Should I just throw it out? Because frankly, if you try to sell it and nobody wants it, maybe you should just throw it out. You know, because you're just going to put a lot of people at this thrift store or whatever to extra work. And I think, frankly, I've talked to a couple of people this past week when they heard I was doing this show and they said, I would rather just throw everything in a trash bag and take it to Goodwill and dump it off. And I thought, you know, why don't you just throw it out then? Oh, well, somebody else might want it. Yeah, but really, would you buy it? Be honest. Are you just taking the lazy way out? It's like, oh, this is just easy. I'm just going to throw it in a big, huge 50-gallon trash bag and dump it off someplace. Then you might as well just dump it off. In a lot of places, you know, you try to donate. I tried to donate baby stuff to a local place for unwed mothers, and they wouldn't take it because it wasn't new. So anyway, so all right. Now, how are you going to accept payments? Like one of the best things to do is if you have an Instagram page, put your stuff up for sale on the Instagram page. Uh, this is taking too long. I'm, I'm talking too long. I'm going to have to go back and make this shorter. Um, so there's different ways you can accept money. You can set up a free account. My number one recommendation is Venmo. And people say PayPal. PayPal takes a percentage. Yes, but you're not establishing a business. You're just getting rid of a few things. Venmo is free. And guess who owns Venmo? PayPal. Um, Zelle is one, Apple Pay, Google Pay. Cash App, um, I've uh, heard a lot of bad things too about Cash App, so be careful with that one. Uh, Stripe, I highly recommend. Again, they're going to take a percentage or Square because Square, you know, like Square and PayPal, you can get the little thing for your phone. It's just an attachment for your phone and you can swipe credit cards. And if you're selling local, I would totally take cash if you're selling local because if you're processing through a credit card, you know, you've got an, another credit card payment that you're going to do. Okay, so let's talk about some of these different apps. So the first thing now you've got your, your closet sorted, you decided what you're going to give away, you've decided um, how you're going to accept money. If you're selling locally, take cash. Cash is king or queen. Uh, if you're going to do something on the internet and do shipping and all that kind of stuff, I would set up a payment plan through Venmo, PayPal, Stripe, you know, some of these others. All right, so where are you going to sell your stuff? Poshmark is the first place you're going to want to go if you're selling clothing. Poshmark is really good because they have a flat rate shipping, so you don't have to worry about how, to, how much to charge uh, for shipping. They do take 20% of your sale. So but you get such a wide reach because you're on Poshmark, right? They have great customer surface. They're super simple to deal with. And um, they are rolling out internationally. I, I'm not sure what countries they're available in right now. But Poshmark is your first go place. Now, if you're more comfortable selling and you sold before, you might want to check out Mercari. Now, Mercari does a lot of things, not just clothing. Poshmark specializes in clothing, but Mercari does a lot of things and they only take 10%. And you can do a lot of promoting within the, the app. Poshmark has amazing customer service. Mercari, not so much. So, but you're paying them less. So if you kind of already know what you're doing and you've sold online before, Mercari may be your best bet because they're very, very diverse and well-known. You can always, of course, go to eBay eBay's been around forever. It is the biggest platform. I have a lot of customization available. And some people don't like that. So if you're setting up a customized store, that may be something. Maybe you already have an account on eBay and are using PayPal for that. Um, but you're on your own. They don't have any customer service for them. Global shipping is much easier, but there are a lot of scammers on there. So you have to be careful. Uh, Tradesy is good for higher, higher end brands. Etsy is good for vintage type stuff. The Real Real is a white glove surface. They, they will do everything for you. Um, I'm not going to, these are less popular. I'm going to deal, uh, do the deep dive on these for the cappuccino club members. Grailed, Depop, or uh, heroin, heroin uh, is good for streetwear, um, kind of hip hoppy type stuff. Men, younger people, designer sneakers. That's those. Any of those three places are great for your designer sneakers. Anything trendy, cool, hip, that kind of stuff. A uh, Facebook Marketplace. They are really pushing this big, and this is good for like Craigslist, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I would tend to go Facebook Marketplace first if I were you. Is great for huge items that you want to sell locally. Now, if you are selling locally, my my number one recommendation for you is you're going to meet somebody. Don't let don't give out your home address. 
um, this would be worth going to Home Depot for $19.99 and renting one of their, their trucks or go to U-Haul and rent one of their trucks if you have a large piece of furniture. But if you're selling smaller items or whatever, I meet in the police department parking lot. Because if you're worried about becoming a skin suit or being stuffed in somebody's trunk, meet in the police department parking lot. And you can meet them there, make your cash exchange. They can pick up their item and go. So Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist are good for very large items that you want to sell locally. And if you're doing local, I would do cash only. Okay. Um, offer up is good. Let go is good. Again, for let... Um, the local items and declutter. So it's D E C L U T T R, no E R, it's just R. This is where you can go to sell all your old tech, your iPods, your laptops, all that kind of stuff, DVDs, betas, VHSs. Um, <coughs> if you scan the barcode, if you have it, <coughs> it will give you a real time price. So I have an iPhone 6 Plus, uh, 128 gig. I can, I, it's in good condition. It's like $100. I had no idea that that thing was still worth $100. They will send you a shipping label. You ship it to them. They buy it from you. Boom. Done. So that way you're not posting and selling on your own. You're not going to get the same price that you will because they're buying it from you and reselling it. But you scan it, picture it, done. They send you the shipping label. You walk into UPS. You show them the shipping label. They put it into a box, the whole shot. You don't even have to box it up. They do all of that for you. So declutter is amazing. All right. So now how are you going to figure out all your pricing? I do want to cut this short because we're already at uh, 30 minutes. Um, but the number one tip I'm going to give you is inside your clothing. Oops. Inside your clothing is your label. I don't know if this one, I think I, because I cut labels off. Don't ever do that. All right. So inside on your label is what is called an RN number. Where is it? There it is. And I'm not. I'm going to move my microphone out of the way. I don't, I don't know if you can see this or not. So let me see if you can see this. But check your label. And here it is. Can you see that? Oh, you can't see it. All right. Anyway, on your tag, oops, on your tag is an RN number. So that RN number on this is 52469. Uh, and then it has an UPC code in the whole shot. You can put that RN number into Google and research it and find you'll find pictures, stock photos, all that kind of stuff of all this kind of stuff. Amazing. So look for the RN number on your clothing label, type that into Google and you will find your item. So that's how you research that item. Then you can have all those stock photos, but you need to take your own pictures. We'll do a deep dive on how to do that for Cappuccino members. And then Google those items to find out comparable part prices. You're going to do comps on all these items. Go to Poshmark. Go to Recently Sold. Go to YouTube and research it. Go to, you know, whatever app you're using on that app, look for Recently Sold, your item. And look and see how people are describing it. And to and, and what kind of prices they're putting on it. What kind of condition is it in? And you're going to price it 10 to 20% below. You want to get rid of this stuff fast and make a lot of money quick. You're not in this to make a big, big bucks off of whatever. You're, you're in this to clear out your closet and get rid of the clutter in your house. Get rid of it. Um, search recently sold and then price your item 10 to 20% below that base, you know, comparable if it's in the same kind of condition. And then if you don't get likes, comments, or it isn't sold within 24 to 48 hours, you can always pull it. Here's the tip on, on using, um, Poshmark, uh, by the way, Poshmark is a very social app. The more often you're posting items, the higher they push you in the feed. Basically, they're going to feature your stuff. So if you have an item, 100 items or 20 items or 10 items, don't sit there one day and try to task it, right? That's how I do. I, I cluster my things and I do the same task all at once. Don't do that on Poshmark. You want to post one item a day for 10 days or 100 days, or whatever. So you're going to space it all out and do one item, one item, one item. And Poshmark goes, oh, look at them. They're a huge seller. We're going to push them into the feed. We're going to give them more exposure. So there's a little tip for using uh, Poshmark. You may want to get a scale. Amazon has one uh, here. Uh, let me just go ahead and put this in the comments. 
that's a really nice scale to use <coughs> and did some research on good scales and the the reason i like this scale so much and all these links are in your show notes uh, the reason i like this scale so much is you can put something on the scale but it has the external screen to tell you so you get this big box you put it on a screen and then or you put it on the scale and then you can't see the screen because the box is covering the screen but this particular one that I put in the notes actually has an external screen. So it's off to the side so that you can actually see how much. So then you're going to do all your photos and you want to make sure things are clean, pressed, hanging, looking nice. Um, on the deep dive for cappuccino members, I'm going to get into exactly how to style it and put it together because you, there's different ways to present it. So if you just have like a t-shirt that you've thrown on the floor and take a picture of it, but it's like a carpet that's busy, that's not going to sell as well as if you had it on a wood floor. Um, and that's not going to sell as well as it would be if you had it hanging and displayed. Um, you know, so there's different tricks on how to do that. Make sure there's no stains. Um, if it has those fabric balls or any lint or anything, make sure you use a lint brush on it before you take the picture and get all those little fabric balls off. Um, when you're selling something, make sure you deodorize it with Febreze. Don't spritz it up with perfume. Clean it, wash it, launder it. Make sure it doesn't smell like smoke. That's something else you're going to want to put in there. It comes from a smoke-free home. And if you are still smoking, you can stop now because you're too beautiful to do that. Um, any minor repairs. And when you're taking all of your pictures, make sure you're taking pictures of the problem with the item. Any damage, worn, chipped, dents anything like that. You want a full view, you want close-up views, we'll get into the, all the de these details. Um, all your measurements uh, and that type of thing. I do see measurements upon request. Why would you do that? Just take the measurements and put them on there so people know. You know, well, I want people to contact me. Why? You're making more work for them and for you. If they already know what the measurements are, they're going to buy it. If the measurements aren't right, it doesn't matter. If they got a hold of you anyway, they're not going to buy it. Uh, I won't get into all the details on how you do um, all of the uh, photographs and that type of stuff. Um, all right, so now last we're going to cover what the problems are if people want to return things. This is why I want you taking so many detailed pictures of stuff beforehand and listing all the problems and getting pictures and lists of problems in your details so that people don't come back to you and say, yeah, I got this and it's got a tear in it. You know what? I took so many pictures of that item. I know there wasn't a tear in it. And here are my pictures from my listing. So the more detailed you can be in your listing and the more pictures that you take of an item, um, the better off you're going to be. It does not happen a lot. It will happen rarely, occasionally. Uh, I used to sell books on Amazon and I had, I did that. I, I took really detailed pictures of everything. And then somebody got it and said that there was, a, they sent a picture of it and said the cover was ripped. And I sent all my pictures back and I said, no, it wasn't. It was not ripped when I sent it. I sent it in a box. Uh, if it, it was damaged in shipping, you need to take that up with UPS. Um, that was the only time I ever had any problem. Um, the other reason somebody is going to return it is they're, they're going to wear it and return it. Um, and, you know, you, if you come up with a return policy, you know, get back to me within 24 hours of receipt of the item. And once you've shipped it, you've got a delivery date on it. So, you know, when they got it, so you can put that in your description, you know, um, contact if, if there's a problem with your delivery contact within 24 hours. Um, another thing is INAD item not as described, but if you're giving detailed descriptions, you're not going to uh, worry about that. Okay. Um, Poshmark, I've already talked about how to promote on Poshmark, but with everything else, it's going to be the same type of thing. You're just going to take it and you're going to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, put it on social media. And if you don't want to deal with any of those apps, you know, the best way to do it, put it on social media. Just put it, if you have Instagram, especially because it's very visual, hey, I've got this for sale. Put it on your Instagram story. You know, this is for sale. Show some pictures of it and say you're willing to do it and, you know, send it out that way. Um, there's also tips on how to sell in bulk. Um, you know, where you can, where you can mention that when you're making the list of your store, contact me for, you know, bulk orders or, or this time, uh, you know, how you give discounts and how you do this and that. But I think once you just pick a couple of your best items that you're going to get rid of and test this out. And once you really, cause you're thinking in your head, I don't want it. Why would anybody else want it? But once you've done a couple of things, it's addictive. You're going to catch the bug. And you're going to want to do this for more and more things. And quite frankly, in today's economy, don't we all need a couple extra $20? I mean, that would put some gas in the tank. Or for $20, you can go buy yourself a new 
silk scarf, you know, or, and I can tell you where, um, you know, it, it's just that little bit of extra money. But you know what also is happening is you're giving people the opportunity because their money is tight to get a good deal on something that they really, really want. And that's the other advantage of pricing things a little bit lower. No, how many people truly are still going to thrift stores? And, and there's a lot of people that don't want to leave the home, their homes right now. And you're really doing them a service by offering something for a good price. You would have donated it to Goodwill. They would, if they were going to go into Goodwill and buy something, they would have gone and bought it from them anyway. So a lot of these places aren't open right now. So help other people in the world get things that they want at a very, very good price. I think it's an act of charity, truly, to clear out your closet and offer these items for people that can't get them on their own. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. That's all it went 40 minutes. Oh my gosh. So I'm sorry it was so long, but if you're not a Cappuccino Club member, make sure you join this week. And um, my phone has been rattling. So I know even during this live recording that some people have already joined us in the Cappuccino Club, which is a good deal. If you are already inside the membership, you will get the notes, but the a deep dive on exactly how to do this and all of the details on closet cleaning and as well as selling is going to be for a special webinar for our Cappuccino members. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Make sure you check out all the details on the Cappuccino Club. And that is not the link. <laughs> that one is. <laughs> I had so many things to show you today. Uh, and make sure that you're uh, looking at the Cappuccino level. And for $20, truly, what I'm going to teach you in this class um, is going to make you lots and lots and lots of more money than just the $20. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time for a shorter episode of Coffee with Colleen. Take care. God bless. Bye. Oops. I don't want that one or that one. That one works. <laughs> All right, I got different camera, camera angles. Let me go back and I saw this over here. Um, I saw this on a couple people. <laughs> Terry, since my brain's using glucose, that means I'll burn the sugar and lose weight. No, this is exclusive brain sugar, brain glucose. And there's only a certain amount in your brain. And then once that the brain has used that, it's done. It doesn't go to the rest of your body and look for more glucose. <laughs> Believe me, I checked. Uh, Amber's funny. I like, tend to be like Barb. I can't do that. Uh, Suzanne, I'm back. I drive home. Uh, it's shipping that kills for selling. No wants to cover shipping. You know what, though? You just figured into your price. <coughs> if shipping, you know, in places like Poshmark, they have flat rate shipping. Um, so if shipping is going to be $8, you just say, oh, I'm just going to sell this for 42 so I'll sell it for 50 And you say, 50 free shipping. Because Amazon, frankly, has gotten us used to free shipping. Hey, did you see Walmart Plus is coming out September 15th? And Walmart Plus is kind of a Amazon Prime. They say they're not competing with Amazon Prime. We know better. They most certainly are. Um, but they're coming out with um, uh, Walmart Plus. And it's just a little plus sign. And it's $98 a year, I think. You get $0.05 cents off a gallon uh, on your gas. And so I figured that out. I'm like, five cents a gallon. So, and their prices are like Murphy gas and that kind of stuff is usually very, pretty much the lowest place around here, especially if you do the five cents off. I think if you buy like a gift card, you get three cents off. But if you do the, um, if you're doing the Walmart Plus, you're going to get five cents off a gallon. So if you're only doing 20 gallons a week for 52 weeks, that's $572 that you save a year. I'm like, even if it's just worth it for the gas, then you get free delivery. So right now, Walmart will deliver to my place for $5, but that would be free delivery um, for groceries or anything, really. <coughs> um, you still get the drive-thru and, and the free the free pickup and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you would get the Shop and Go app. I was a tester. Our local area was a tester for the Shop and Go. So if you shop at Sam's you, or Scan and Go, um, if you shop at Sam's, you'll know that um, you get that scan and go app. Let me see if it's on my, I still have it here. Yeah, there's my, well, they have it. What they did is they incorporated, Sam's actually incorporated it into their, 
um, their app. So you just sign in. Let me see, you just sign in. And then, oh, it's not going to activate because I'm not in the store. Okay, well, never mind. Um, but anyway, you just scan the barcode. As you're shopping, you scan the barcode, put it in the basket, scan the barcode, put it in the basket. Um, and then once you get up to the register, you just scan your phone. It has like the little QR code, and it prints up the whole thing, and then it pays for it, and then you you walk. You can bag up your stuff and walk out. Or if you're like me, you bring bags with you. Um, and as you're shopping, you can just put them into the bags and uh, scan as you go. You know, and to me, it's time management because you pick it off the shelf, scan it, put it in the bag, you're done. As opposed to taking it off the shelf, putting it in your cart, getting up, putting it on the belt, then it goes through and, the, and then, then you you know, pay for it and then you have to bag it up and then put it. You're skipping all those other steps. You scan, put in your bag, scan, put in your bag. Love the time management. So we were one of the testers for that uh, two years ago and love, 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 loved it. Um, and then they found that their shrinkage, which means people stealing, we jokingly called it the steal and go app. Um, they found out that they lost a lot of money. So they eliminated it for Walmart, but they kept it for Sam's. So Sam still has the scan and go, but now with the new Walmart plus, you're going to get it back. Um, Holly says, how can I find this when I can actually watch? Uh, it's all the same links. She's probably not here anymore. <laughs> <coughs> it's all the same links that I sent out. Um, always actively shopping unique vintage dishes. Yeah, my daughter is too. Off oh, Robin, Five Mile. Five Mile is another one that's a local thing. Forgot about them. Uh, PayPal is behind most of these apps. There's one that, that I send money internationally um, that I, well, from my paid employees that are overseas, I, I do it a different way, but there's a PayPal app called Zoom. It's X-O-O-M that you can send money internationally because PayPal doesn't allow you to send money internationally. PayPal and I have a hate-hate relationship. I'm not a fan of PayPal. <laughs> Plus, they totally messed up my oldest daughter's stuff. She's in litigation. Wow. And have not had problems with Cash App. Yeah, Square's good. Cash, my daughters use Square all the time for their business. Um, Cash App... Using it personally is not a problem. The problem is there are scanners on Cash App. So people who are purchasing from you who may be well versed in this kind of stuff may not want to purchase from you through Cash App. That's why it's nice to have. I have different. I have PayPal. I have Square. I have Stripe. I love Stripe. Um, so I have uh, different ones. Because so, some people, they're just not comfortable with it. Uh, Margo, this was very helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Such a good show. So Cindy Lou, my hubby woke up and heard you. He wanted me to send it to him. He's ready to sell all my clothes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Michelle says she loves her scan and go at Sam's. I do too. And I love getting up to the front and like you're done and you just wheel that little that little buggy right out the door. Uh, and the thing where Sam's had it uh, ahead of Walmart is they already check your stuff at the door and Walmart never did that. So I think when they were testing the scan and go at Walmart, they never checked our stuff. We just walked out the door. And that's why my husband are like, geez, I mean, it's, they should call it the steal and go app, you know, and that's actually what the study found. Uh, Cindy Lou says she's having problems with PayPal too. So made the switch to Stripe and loving it. I do love Stripe. I love Stripe. And there's people that, you know, when PayPal first came out because of eBay, right? Um, <clears throat> the, and, and as a, as a consumer, I like PayPal. So if I'm purchasing something, I may use PayPal because they always seem to take the customer side <laughs> and Stripe doesn't do that. Um, so I've had people like totally rip me off and they purchase through PayPal and I'm like, not only was this advertised, you know, a 30-day return policy and it's been a year and a half or, you know, whatever. And PayPal takes their side and refunds them. I'm like, seriously? So as a business owner, I'm not keen on PayPal. Um, but I do know as a consumer that PayPal tends to take the consumer side. Not always, but because I've had that problem with them too. So... But yeah, I do love Stripe for business. Um, I, I like, and because I've been doing business with them so so much, I get my money right away. Um, 
and there's just less hassle, I think, with Stripe. I really like Stripe. But yeah, I, I mean, I seriously <coughs> was skipped. Oh, I'm not talking to you, phone. I seriously skipped over so much stuff, and I still went 40 minutes. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting in with the cappuccino members and doing a deep dive on this stuff because um, uh, it's and it's going to be so what's going to happen is cappuccino members uh, you get all the notes and you get all that kind of stuff and everything but I'm going to do this for a paid webinar uh, and the webinar is going to be $27 so cappuccino members are going to be 20 it's $20 to become a cappuccino member but if you're not going to do that and you just want to do the webinar it's going to be 27 so do the math um, but yeah, that's probably, that's going to be done next week. <coughs> I got something going on in my throat. Don't not know what it is. Was this something else I wanted to share with you? And I don't remember. I'm going to close that. Um, don't remember what it was. Huh? All right. I, I, I used to have a friend of mine that said, uh, if you can't remember what you were going to say, it was probably a lie. I don't know. Maybe maybe my brain just checked out. <laughs> Won't go that far and say it was a lie, but whatever. <laughs> so anyway, so hopefully that was helpful for you. If you did find it was helpful, please share it. Um, and like I said, there was so much, and I'm like scanning through my notes, because especially when I looked up and I saw the time, I thought, you know, I tried to cover too much. You know, I could have had one whole show on the on how to organize your closet. And did you guys was that helpful? Because I think when you have an exact number, like I need five tops, four bottoms, four dresses, three finisher pieces. Um, you know, a pair of pumps, a pair of flats. Uh, you know, I, I think that's a good place to get a core, core, core thing going, and then shove all the other stuff out of the way, and get rid of it. Terry says she was scammed by a business in China, paid with PayPal, and they never did anything for me. Wow. Discover ended up fixing the situation, but it took months. Yeah. Yeah, Discover is usually pretty good. That's surprising because my experience with PayPal has been getting less. <laughs> I don't like PayPal. I, I, I offer them because a lot of people like it. Um, but my primary option is always use your credit card, and then that's, that's through Stripe. Um, but like I said, if I was dealing with anything local, it would totally be cash. <clears throat> I would deal with um, somebody using cash locally. Um, you know, maybe maybe do, you know, the, the credit card swipe with Square. My daughters use Square. Um, they set up their whole inventory and Square has good business things for them because they have more of a physical, because they're hairdressers, right? So um, they have all the Redken products and then they have their products that they use, you know, like the Joyco's and, and the hair color and, and that type of thing that they have all inventoried in there too. So I help them with setting that up in Square. So Square's good if, you know, because they have all those other business options to use. Um, but yeah, very helpful. Good. I was just glad, glad it was helpful. I'm glad it was helpful. All right. Well, I'm going to head out of here. I've got my social media person is coming. Should be here in about 10 minutes. And we have some things to go over. Um, trying to decide if I want to post at the same time every day. I was looking at analytics and it's like, um, it, it tells you what time of day people are clicking on your posts and, and commenting. And each day of the week is different. So I'm like, should I post at the same time every day? Or should I post based on when people are like commenting and sharing? Or is it just the quality of the information? Are they like in this thing or that thing? Or, you know, so <clears throat> anyway, that's what my new social media manager and I are going to be talking about. Then I've got to reach out to one of my assistants for getting me scheduled on podcast. Oh gosh, the only other thing is I forgot I'm, I'm speaking at a virtual summit, two virtual summits this month, and I have to run ads for that. Minette says, I take all my things to a local consignment. They pay at 50% when it sells. If it doesn't sell in a certain amount of time, I think they donate it and it helps those who, yeah, I've lost everything in a fire or whatever. Cool. Thanks. Great as always, says Minette. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Yeah, that's, that's a nice option, but there are a lot of people who, this is my social media manager running 10 minutes late. See, I don't mind when people are late as much as if they don't tell me. That bothers me. Anyway, so um, yeah, and I, I just think I know with 
like my daughters, they have totally shut down their hair business. They're like, they don't even go into the salon anymore. Um, I think, you know, we've had a problem here locally too, just all of a sudden, <clears throat> um, when school opened, there's a lot of kids that got sick. And so, but a lot of people aren't even leaving their homes and, you know, I don't want to get political about it at all. Please God, don't let it get political. But, um, everybody's handling this situation a little bit differently. Um, and my daughters, because of the grandbabies are choosing to stay close to home. And I know a lot of people that are doing that. They're not going out. They're not. I mean, I went out to eat for the first time in a very, very long time. I went to Red Lobster this past week. And um, we were one of three tables in the entire restaurant that were taken, that were being used. Uh, so I know a lot of people aren't going out to eat. Um, so I know a lot of people aren't going to consignment thrift show, thrift, thrift stores. <laughs> I've even had my coffee this morning, too. So um, it, it's just a, a good way to help people. Like Manette said, you know, if somebody lost everything in a fire or, you know, money's tight right now. And a lot of people's clothing needs are changing. So anyway, all right. It's been an hour almost. Nobody's ever going to watch this replay. <laughs> I'm going to have to go through. You know what I might do is I'm just going to go through and trim it on Facebook. I'll trim the front and the back off. Um, and take all the chit chat off. So it's only going to be 40 minutes long. Maybe some people, maybe I'll get some replay views on that. <laughs> Doubt it. Alrighty. All right, let's get out of here. Um, why is my microphone so hot today? <clears throat> Was it breaking up? Yeah, I even turned it down and it's still maxing out in the red zone. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and, and get on out of here and make it a great day. And we'll see how this time works for everybody. Let me know. All right, take care. God bless. Love you. Bye.